folks. What is going on this Tuesday night? It is 7 p.m. I uh, got a little bit of a weird stream set up here. Playing, doing more experimentation. Switching sides, camera angles, all that kind of stuff. But uh, do I hope you're doing well. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about, this is day number 461 in the journey towards that CCIE number. So um, we are carrying on, and as of right now, of course, looking at uh, Nat. I'm uh, going to go over that in here in a minute. Uh, 104 days to go till my lab, till sitting for the lab. Hey, yeah, glad to hear you're doing well, Mark Milo. Good to see you here this evening. Um, yeah, there was a really cool launch today. I don't know if anybody got to see it happen here on what they call the Space Coast. Let me just see real quick. Um, it was a Orion test, abort test, uh, the second one, I think, and it's pretty cool. Um, anyway, I know that's kind of like space news, but uh, it's this sort of capsule here. It's really slick because what happened is this thing, so they, they did this test and this thing took off. And what happens is it, it the idea is if there's an explosion uh, or some malfunction of the main booster is that this little cone up here at the top will go even faster than what this is going and take off in another direction and jettison the uh, crew capsule to safety. Uh, and their test was successful. Really cool to watch, too. It's probably on YouTube by now, I'm sure. Um, anyway, I watched it live this morning. Uh, but back in networking news. So, yeah, 104 days left to go. And I've been working on NAT. I don't have NAT down as well as I thought I did. And what I mean by that is some of the labs I've been doing in the workbook, I thought it was just kind of kind of plow through those. Let me open up the workbook here. Yeah, I've already got it open. Um, I started working through some of these labs. And then I got down to, I think, Static Pat or one of these and had some trouble. And I thought, you know what? I need to back up because I don't know these statements as well as I thought I did. So, And I need to know them. So I started doing a little more study. I used NetworkLessons.com. NetworkLessons.com has some good stuff on there. And, of course, the Cisco documentation. I'm actually going to tweet this out. Normally, I'm complaining about Cisco Docs. Uh, but in particular, I took a snapshot of this. They uh, have, and, of course, NAT is covered. This took me a little a minute just to kind of figure out where it is. But if you go to the configuration guides or in the command references, this is all under IP addressing section. And there's a section on NAT. But they have, they have good documentation in here. Um, I like it. Uh, you know, it's, you never know with Cisco documentation, but there's some really, really good docs and there's some really horrible docs with grammatical errors, but this one's really good uh, and uh, very helpful. Um, so what I end up doing, and this is going to help me a lot. I made some flashcards and going back through the labs again is going to help me practice some more. All done with my flashcards already, by the way, did, it, did them during lunch break. Um, but let's see if I can find the one I just made here, Nat. Oh, yeah. So this, is, to me, is a good... I think understanding this goes a long way. Uh, cards. How do I view that card? There's a way from here where you can just open this card. Some... I don't know, it's kind of weird the way sometimes this interface works. Like, you can go to browse, but if you just want to, like, if you just want to use this card, there's probably a way to do it, but I don't know how to just open this card. Um, I just want to see this card. Like, I, I just want to see the front and then the back. Like, you see it when you're reviewing it. Preview. There it is. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I think if you... Uh, this is really the key. Uh, some of this... is There's a lot of different ways people have it illustrated. I uh, quoted out uh, Jed Casey's um, on Necrocube.com, his blog site. He has a very detailed 
um, lesson on NAT and all the different varieties of NAT. But if you just look at this, for example, if you can understand these two statements, so IP NAT inside source and IP NAT outside source, because a lot of your statements are going to be this, one or the other. And there we flip to the to the back side. So um, basically, you walk through all the options on the IP NAT statement. When it's inside, it means that um, inside source. So the flow of the traffic is going. You're going to source traffic from the inside towards the outside interface, right? Or it could be basically the reverse, the destination address, the destination IP from the outside to the inside. So it's not just about inside to outside translation. It's also about outside to inside translation. But this is the starting point, basically, where you, you have this and essentially the reverse. So IPNAT inside source, IPNAT um, outside destination is how you could word that, right? In fact, I should probably put that. So you get IPNAT inside source and it's reverse, IPNAT outside destination. Then you've got IPNAT outside source and, of course, it's reverse, which would be um, IP destination inside that's actually i need to fix this card Sorry with that one moment but anyway this that is a key thing to understand right so going back into edit this i've got a typo here so we could say really and it's helpful to kind of talk this through too um because we come up with like other ways to word it but so basically, this means um, we're translating the source IP from inside to outside. Or the reverse, translating destination IP from outside to in just to abbreviate that a little bit and we'll use ip nat outside source translate um out uh destination sorry translating the source ip from outside to in or the reverse, translating the destination from inside to outside. So we can see how this would be different. We might be translating from inside to out with this. Um, but in that case, it would be the destination part of the IP header. Whereas in this case, we're translating from inside to out. Oh my goodness, five months to Higo. Man, how are you doing? In one month streak, thanks so much for the sub. Appreciate it, my friend. I hope you're doing well. It's been a little over a year since uh, we met <laughs> uh, at the uh, Cisco Live uh, 2018. Thank you so much for the support. I always appreciate it. Glad to see you here in the stream and hope your studies are going well. Uh, are you working on anything these days, my friend? CCMP route after completing. Yeah, I knew you did some Juniper. Um, CCMP by end of year. All right, man. So uh, good bits go to you. Enjoy your emote, of course. As you know, uh, subscribe for many months here. Um, I wish you the best. I will say, uh, Tigo, I don't know if you knew, but uh, you probably did. I took the CCMP route switch uh, route exam 
and failed um, at Cisco Live. That was my free exam. And uh, I was a little surprised at some of the content I saw on the exam. Namely, like, you know, I guess this covered in the blueprint. It, it's still, you know, it, I guess the CCMP blueprints have not been updated for even longer since the CCIE route switch has been updated. I guess the blueprints are older because some of the things I saw in the blue, in the exam were actually, I guess I wasn't expecting. Uh, but but yeah, best of best of luck, my friend, on that. I sure hope so. Let me get let me ask uh, Tigo, how many exams have you completed? How many do you have to go? Oh yeah, it's V two or CCNA was V three and it's about to re be ramped in February. Yep. Switch completed. Okay, so you've got two exams, I assume. Route and uh, well, some people do route first. Yeah, route t-shirt. So you got one under your. Uh... All right, man. That's great. Okay, thank you, Tigo. Appreciate you dropping in. Uh, I won't be here too much longer. Again, uh, this is a good wording here for the NAT. Um, you really have four sort of variations here, but you only need to know two ways to put it on the CLI, right? Each accounts for two of the scenarios. So, of course, the one you use most, at least the one I've seen most so far in my labs, are IPNAT inside source. Um, seems to be the most common. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so I will be working on that in terms of scheduling. So here in the U.S., of course, we have the holiday coming up uh, July 4th. Independence Day, I have Thursday off. I do not have tomorrow off. And I do not have Friday off, but Friday is going to be a short day, I'm sure, easy day. <laughs> it Well, sometimes I let us go early. It'll either be tomorrow or Friday. I suspect it'll be tomorrow because um, a lot of people are taking Friday off. I was originally planning to take Friday off and lap, but what I've decided to do is move that to the following Friday. And I'm not sure. What I'm thinking about doing is potentially... Uh, just just because I really need to concentrate when I'm doing, for example, the INE Labs. And there is this new thing called subscriber-only streams. I don't know much about it. Um, but that would, I don't know. I'm, think, I'm considering doing that just because that might help keep, um, or no, maybe I could do a regular stream and do subscriber-only chat. I just won't be able to interact too much. Um, so maybe we could do that. Maybe we do a regular stream. And uh, it, it's not like I'm trying to boost subs or anything. I, folks, I, I've spent way more money doing the stream than any that has really come back. That's not why I do it, right? But um, I just want to be able to do sort of distraction-free, and maybe we'll do that. We'll just do sort of a stream. Uh, I could lab the experience, and uh, it depends. Depends on the screen situation as well because I can lab from the other uh, machine as well, which is what I'm using for. So when I do the INE, um, I've been using the rack rentals lately, and it's really great. It's um, the interfaces are a little bit different, of course. So the the interfaces are instead of like GI zero zero. Uh, or GI10, I should say, it would be GI1.1 or GI1.0. So simple stuff, but uh, I'm able to use putty, like the real lab, notepad, everything is very much set up the way I expect it to be in the real lab. So uh, we'll see. I'll let y'all know on Discord uh, tomorrow. I may do a brief stream. Uh, we'll see. It's kind of like, tomorrow night's kind of like my Friday night. Tonight's kind of like the Thursday night, Friday Eve. It's it's kind of weird when you have a a holiday in the middle, sort of in, in the middle of the week. But it's cool. I like it. Um, but yeah, so I'll let you know on Discord how that goes. And then uh, next week, of course, I'll probably have a day of a very... I'll, I'll see if I could work out 
doing at least one of the weekend days, like the Saturday, you know, there'll be a Friday, there'll be a three day weekend for me. And, um, maybe at least one of those days we can stream and I'll do some of these big labs. Like, uh, what I have coming up this weekend is, I don't know, it's crazy. I'm already talking about weekend, but, uh, still going through foundation lab two. I'm going to start again. What I tend to do when I start on the weekend is I'll start from scratch, like from the beginning. Work on my speed, not full scale. That's full scale, foundation. Work on my speed and try to get through the entire thing in one day if I can. That's my goal. Um, so I may have to do it two, three times again before I have all the concepts down and all the config pretty much um, through muscle memory where I can knock out the lab, you know, in a relatively quick amount of time. Once I can do that, I'll move on to Foundation Lab 3, which I know will be even bigger. It'll probably have some multicast, things like that. Uh, but anyway, that's what's coming up, folks. Exciting things. 13 free weekends left before my exam, so pressure's on. Really cool link. This will be the last thing I share. Um, I didn't realize Nick Russo... Yeah, man... Um, I, I didn't realize Nick Russo had a YouTube uh, page, but he does. And he posts this, I think I saw this on LinkedIn or Twitter. But he's got some more OSPF, like, uh, graphing goodies out there, video, etc. So this is a side, I guess there was, there was so much stuff he wanted to do at Cisco Live, which, of course, you can watch on demand. Um, at the on-demand library. You can watch his last session. I attended his session two years ago. Yeah, this looks new. Like So even the Cisco Live session, there was new stuff in there that was not there last year. And this stuff, I think, is... These are things. There's some IPv6. There's some OSPF v3 in here in this YouTube video, which I haven't watched yet, but I'm going to. And I think this is stuff he couldn't even fit into the Cisco Live session, even though that was jam-packed. If you watched it, you know, like, it's a full two hours of, of goodies. So, um, anyway, highly recommend this. Check out his channel. He's got a few videos on there. Maybe he'll start adding more. If, if Nick Russo starts streaming, like, I may be done, guys, because <laughs> I want to go watch his stream, right? Uh, he has such good stuff. Anyway, thanks so much for hanging out. That's gonna I'm gonna call a night there. We shall see y'all back here uh, tomorrow night, most likely here on the Land Tamer stream. Good bits, everybody.